Well, of course, there's been a lot of frustration. This has been really tough on the on the tourism industry. The thing I was hearing, though, two or three weeks ago was the problems with the PPP program that didn't really, the, the program was a sort of one size fits all, and it didn't help particularly hospitality businesses. Fortunately, we were able to get through a bill, again, on a bipartisan basis about two weeks ago that made a, a lot of changes that really fixed that bill to make it more useful to our businesses. But you're right. I mean, when the when you draw lines for, for us, you know, the river is the line between Sagadahoc County and, and Cumberland County. So businesses in Topsom or Bath can open up and not in Brunswick. Uh, hopefully we're starting to carefully do that. But, you know, I've got to say I'm, I'm still worried about uh, the future of this uh, this virus. It's we're not we're not over it, and uh, the, some people around here are acting like you know let's just change the subject. Well, the virus doesn't care whether we change the subject. The virus is still going, and there are, I think uh, last count twenty two states where the the trend of cases and hospitalizations is still up. So I think we still got to take care. I I wear my mask and. And uh, I think that, you know, the, they say mask is the most effective way, the most effective single thing that we can do uh, to prevent the spread of the virus. And to me, to not wear a mask is really saying, you know, I don't care about your health. Uh, I only care about me. So I think the responsible thing is to wear a mask. And I'll show it to you, by the way. I've got it right here. Can you get a close up of that? It's, oh, it's we got the lobster. lobster. You know, a friend of mine in Maine made that for me who lives up on the coast. And that's, that's what I wear when I'm at the Capitol. That said, a lot of this reopening has been sort of at the helm of states themselves. Do you right. think the federal government is doing enough to sort of steer this in the right direction? Well, I think the decision to allow the states to decide what worked for them was the right decision. I mean, as I say, one size fits all rarely fits all. And so having the governors make those kinds of decisions. The problem is I think the federal government let the governors down by not putting in place a really vigorous testing and tracing program, because that made the governor sort of fly blind. I mean, they, they've had to make these decisions about reopening without the, the tools necessary. And that's where I think uh, the, the, the federal government really uh, fell down on this. And, you know, we all sacrificed, we all stayed at home and our businesses, you know, had, a, had all the, the huge impact that they had for two or three months. That was the time when the federal government should have been gearing up this infrastructure for testing, and they really haven't done it. They, they've, it's expanded somewhat, and the state has had to, you know, this, Governor Mills has made a deal with IDEX to expand testing in Maine, but this is something the federal government should have done. They have the tools, and I think uh, they put the governors in a terrible position. I can't imagine having to make that decision between damage to your businesses that you can see and feel and the risk to main people's lives. I mean, that's talk about an agonizing decision. And I know Governor Mills has really thought hard about that. She's tried to do it by the science. Everybody's mad at her. Maybe that means she's doing the right thing. Rob and I on 207 are big fans of your Instagram account and all the photos you post there. You had a really poignant one the other day about Ulysses S. Grant and that statue. You talked about the process to change names of army bases. Where, do, where does that stand? Well, the very day that I made that post happened to be the day we had an armed services committee meeting on the National Defense Act, which is the big annual bill that we do every year that controls all, you know, what goes on in the military. And actually, on a bipartisan basis, that committee adopted a, an amendment that said, we're going to change those uh, bases, names, over the next three years. Because if you stop and think about it, there's not a base named for Grant. I posted the picture of General Grant's statue in the rotunda. The man that, that saved the Union, that, that won the Civil War, and was the scourge of the Ku Klux Klan when he was president, he doesn't have a, an army base named after him, but we've got 10 bases named after Confederate generals who breached their oath to the United States when they left the U.S. Army, and they took up arms against their country. It, it, it really, if you step back and say, you know, what sense does this make? It really, it really doesn't. We've got Medal of Honor winners, We've got, you know, Joshua Chamberlain, General Grant. We've got some great heroes, Eisenhower, you, you name it, George C. Marshall. Let's name those bases for people that we can be proud of. 
and not send young people who've just taken an oath to support the Constitution to get their training at a base named for a guy who breached his oath. 